Hi everybody and welcome to this series of screencasts on programming for psychology, data analysis and visualization. So in this first screencast we're going to be looking at the topic of arrays. So what we want to uh, get out of this lesson is we want you to be able to create this data type called array um, using some um, functions as part of the NumPy package. I also want you know, to know how to access subsets of array elements using indexing. Similar like we've um, um, seen before with lists, we can index arrays in similar fashion. I want us to understand how we can apply operations to both all the items in an array and over uh, selected items in an array. And finally, we want you to be able to know how to save and load arrays uh, to and from uh, disk. Okay, so as usual, we'll go to Spider. Now in this lesson, we're going to be introducing a, a really important data type for data analysis. And this is called an array. So we're going to be using this external Python package called NumPy for our array functionality. So you might recall that if we want to add such uh, additional or external functionality to our Python scripts, we need to use this import command. So with uh, NumPy, we're usually going to start all our scripts with, at the top, import NumPy. So if you remember, there's a, a convention where we use NumPy so often, we want to be able to refer to it um, uh, in a shorter way. So we usually have as NP. So now we can use NP as a shorthand for NumPy that allows us to access all this extra functionality. Okay, so first we're going to have a talk about how we can actually create arrays. So there are a few ways of doing this, but first we're going to look at the array version of a, a function that we've uh, come across previously, and this is the range function that we use to make a list. So if you remember, with a list we might have something like our range list equals range 10. So what this would do would generate a list with the values from 0 through 9. So what we'll do is just print out, we can use this function called type that's going to tell us the data type in this variable, our list, and then we'll also want to print the contents of our list. So if we save this and run it, you can see our output is telling us that this variable holds data of the type list and look at its contents, it's the numbers 0 through 9. So that's all good, we've come across that before. So now we're going to look at the NumPy and the array version. So let's call it range array. So now we're going to use a NumPy function rather than, rather than range. So we're going to proceed it by NP and then dot. Now instead of range, we're going to use a range. So array range. And in a similar way, we're going to give it the argument 10. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll print the type of our array and we'll print the contents of our array. Okay, so now if we save it and run it, I can see that as we had before, our list, and now we have our array. So you can see it no longer has the type of a list. It has the uh, data type of a NumPy array and it has the same uh, contents as a list so the numbers 0 through 9, but the difference is that as a, a, an array data type we have a whole host of other functionality that we don't have if it's um, a list. So we're going to come across some of that additional functionality, but before we get to that we're going to talk a little bit about one of the most useful things about arrays, and that is that they can have multiple dimensions. So a frequently encountered form of data is a table where you have a number of rows and a number of columns. So we can represent this kind of data structure by creating a two-dimensional array. So for example, the function ones uh, creates an array of a particular size where all the elements have the value of one. So let's use that to make um, an array with five rows and three columns. So we could do something like data equals np dot ones. So remember this function ones returns an array where all the items have the value of one. And we're going to give it an argument called shape. And we're going to say five and three. 
So we can read this as NumPy, generate me an array of ones that has five rows and three columns. And then let's have a look at it. Now if we save it and run this, you can see that now we have this, um, this tabular structure where we have one, two, three columns, one, two, three, four, five rows, and each item in each row and column is one. So you can think about how this is. This might be a, a really important uh, data structure for the kinds of uh, experiments and the kind of analysis we do in psychology. So you might imagine that each row is going to represent a particular participant. So say if you had five participants, and say if you're doing a, a repeated measures design, you had three conditions, each column would represent a condition. So now you're representing the complete data from this experiment that you can then go on to, to analyze. So once we've created an array, uh, we can access various uh, properties of the array variable that are, are useful. So we can have a look at data.shape, we'll look at data.size, and data.ndim. Okay, so if we save that and run it, okay, so we can see that the, the shape is going to tell us the um, the number of items along each dimension of the array. So we see we have five and then three. The size is going to tell us that the total number of items in the array, so 15, because we have five times three. And ndim gives us the number of dimensions in the array. So here we have a 2D array, rows and columns, so ndim is two. Okay, so now how can we access the items in this array? So we can actually use similar techniques to what we did with, with lists. So let's make an array. So another R array equals range, sorry, mp.a range 10. Okay, so now what we can do things like print R array colon five. So this will, um, pr this will print out all the items in R array, zero, one, two, three, four. We could do something like print uh, array colon colon minus one. This will um, present um, print out the items in RA in reverse order. Let's save it and run it. So you can see zero one two three four and the array in reverse order. So this is the same sort of thing we've encountered with with lists in the past. But when we have arrays that have more than one dimension, indexing can become um, much more advanced and much more useful. So let's generate one of these multi-dimensional arrays uh, using a, a random number generator. So what we can do is data equals mp.random.random and we'll give it a size argument of five rows and three columns. Okay, so now let's have a look at the data. So this is going to generate a array of random numbers between zero and one. You can see that has five rows and three columns. So now we can access the individual items in this array by doing things like print data zero, zero. So now what we're saying is give me the item that's on the first row and the first column. Or we could have Give me the data on the second row and the first column, or give me the data on the second row and the last column. Okay, let's save this and run it. So you can see here we have our full data table, and we're asking for the first row, first column, 0.6376. You can see it here. First, second row, first column, 0 0.633, 0 0.633. Second row, last column, second row, last column, 0 0.503, 0 0.503. So you can see how we can pull out um, single items from this array. But importantly, we can also access all the items along a particular dimension. So we could do something like colon, comma, zero to pull out all the rows for the first column. Or we could do print data, zero, which will give us all the columns for the first row. Let's save it and have a look. OK, 
Okay, here's our, our random data. Here's where we're pulling out all the rows for the first column. Here's where we're pulling out all the columns for the first row. So we can also extract items from our array by using another array of Boolean values as our index. So for example, if we use the greater than operator on an array, it gives us back another array of Booleans. So then we can use this Boolean array to index the data where it gives us back those items where the corresponding item in the Boolean array is true. So let's have a look at an example. So again, let's have the data be a random. This time, let's just make it a single dimension, 10 numbers. Let's just have a look at that. Save it and run it. Okay, so we have this list-like array of 10 numbers. So now what we're going to do is create a, a Boolean array variable by doing so greater than, greater than 0.5 equals data is greater than 0.5. Now let's print that. Print greater than 0.5. Save and run it. Okay, so here's our data. And here is the array of Boolean values that's created when we use this greater than operation. So you can see this correspondence here. So is 0.14 greater than 0.5? False. Is 0.68 greater than 0.5? True. 0.33? False. 0.91? True. And so on. So now we have this um, array of true and false values we can use this as an index into our original array. So we could do something like print data with the variable gt.5. And if we save this and run it, again, we have our 10 random numbers. We have our Boolean array of true and false values reflecting whether that particular item was greater than 0.5. Now we've used that as an index into the original data and gives us back an array where all the numbers are those that were above 0.5 in the original array. So this is a really useful way to, to index arrays. So let's have a, a little look at the um, operations we can apply to arrays. So we can use the conventional maths operators with arrays. So remember if you recall back to when we we're looking at lists, the maths operators tended to have either undefined or perhaps a bit unusual functionality. If we apply them to arrays, they tend to behave as we would expect. So for example, if we generate an array of ones, so four ones, we can do things like print data plus one, print data times three, print data minus two. So if we save that and run it, See that when we add one, it adds one to every item. So now they're all two times it by three times one by three in each item. Subtract two takes away two from each item. So we can also use operators that apply over the items in array. So for example, we could add together all the items in the array. So we could do something like, let's just print the data. Then we do something like the np.sum which takes an array of what we'll call data. So now if we save that and run it, you can see that this sum function has taken in this array of four ones, it's added all these values together and given us back the number four. So what starts to get really useful is when we apply this to multi-dimensional arrays because we can give it an argument called axis. And this specifies the axis over which the operation is applied. So again, let's, let's generate some data. Again, we'll just do ones. We'll have four rows and three columns. Now we'll just set some of this data manually. So the second row, all the columns will set to be two. Third row, all the columns will set to be three. Fourth row, all the columns will set to be four. So let's just print that and see what effect that's had. Okay, so now you can see we have this uh, four rows by three columns data structure where the rows go one, two, three, four. Okay, so now we can look at using this axis argument. So we can do something like print np.sum data 
Now we're going to give it this axis equals zero. So now this is saying sum over all the, the rows in this data. So if we save it and run it, now you can see that what's happening is it's summing over the rows. So it's one plus two plus three plus four gives us 10. Same with this row, same with this row. So this sum with the axis is operating over just the rows in this data. Of course, we can do the, the opposite as well. We can sum across over the columns, save that and run it. Now you can see that rather than summing this way, now we're summing this way. We're summing over columns. So we have one, two, three, two, four, six, three, six, nine, four, eight, twelve. So this gets really useful, a really useful way to um, um, perform operations and do really useful things with multidimensional arrays. Okay, so the final point we're going to cover today is how we can load and save arrays uh, to and from disk. So if you're using one or two dimensional arrays, a really straightforward and recommended way to load and save data is in the form of a, of a text file. So this can be opened in any editor and really maximizes the interoperability of your data with other programs. So to do this, we can use two functions in NumPy called save text and load text. So for example, what we can do is generate some random data. So data equals random.random and we'll give it three columns and two, three rows and two columns. We'll have a look at it. Now what we're going to do is use this function np.save.txt, save text. Now the first argument to this is the file name. So we'll call it data.txt and we'll give it the data. Okay, so now we've saved this um, information in data into this file called data.txt. Now we're going to use a, a function called load text to load it back up. So we're going to define a variable called saved data equals mp.load.txt and we give it our file name. So data.txt. Finally, we're going to print it out. So print saved data. Okay, so let's look through what we've done here. Firstly, we've generated a random number array with three rows and two columns. Then we printed out the contents of this array. Then we've used this function save text. So save the data array to a file called data.txt. Then we're going to load it back up using load text, giving it the file name into a variable called save data, which we're again going to print the contents of. And let's save this and run it. Okay, so you can see this is the data. We've saved it to disk. When we load back up our data, we can have our data available to us again. So if your array has more than two dimensions, then saving as a plain text file often gets difficult and it's not really practical. Uh, in such circumstances, you can use np.save and np.load, so no txt, and we typically give these files the extension .npy. Okay, so going back to objectives. So we've looked today about how we can create arrays using NumPy functions. So we thought, saw things like ones and the random number generators and a range. We looked at how we can access subsets of array elements using indexing. So the same sort of indexing you saw with lists and also this uh, column indexing to allow us to access uh, different uh, rows and columns, for example and also this indexing by booleans. We saw how we can use um, operations to apply to the items in array and over the items in array. And finally, we looked at how we can save and load our arrays to and from disk. Okay, I'll see you in the next screencast.